Hello, I'm David Hughes. Welcome to Your Perfect Body, the podcast of the esoteric teaching community. Today's selection is Sri Ishopanishad Mantra 5. Tad ejati, tad naijati, tad dure, tad vantike, tad antarasya sarvasya, tadu sarvasya sya bahyataha. Synonyms Tat, this Supreme Lord, ejati, walks. Tat, he, na, not. Ejati, walks. Tat, he, dure, far away. Tat hi u also antike very near. Tat hi antaha within asya of this sarvasya of all. Tat hi u also sarvasya of all asya of this bahyataha external to. Translation. The Supreme Lord walks and does not walk. He is far away, but he is very near as well. He is within everything, and yet he is outside of everything. PURPORT The Supreme Lord's transcendental activities always seem paradoxical when viewed with mundane vision. But even the impossible becomes possible when executed by his inconceivable potencies. The apparent contradictions in this verse are only artifacts of our limited materialistic system of representation, language, and logic. They do not and cannot prove any contradictions in the inconceivable potencies of the Lord, who is all perfect by nature. He walks and he does not walk is a coded expression meant for those who know the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. It is a message from Srila Vyasadeva, the compiler of the Vedas, to remind us that in some pastimes he appears like an ordinary human being, walking from place to place. In others, he suddenly appears out of nowhere. Accordingly, we will narrate some of these pastimes later on. We cannot accommodate the paradoxical nature of multidimensional spiritual reality with the limited tools of Western Aristotelian logic. If we try to do this, we will see the Lord in terms of our own limited conception of reality. This inevitably results in trying to reason about spiritual objects with material logic, leading to erroneous conclusions. Most modern philosophers assume that the Lord's impersonal feature of unlimited existence and pure consciousness is the supreme and reject his personal form and activities. But the esoteric teaching is built on the perfect conception of the Lord. Therefore, we accept the inconceivable and paradoxical nature of his potencies. We can understand that supreme means that he is the complete whole both personal and impersonal. The Supreme Personality of Godhead means inconceivable omnipresence, omnipotence, and omniscience. Many people of ordinary intelligence take it for granted that because we cannot see the Lord, he has no personal existence. But Sri Ishupanishad reveals that he is both far away, beyond our vision, and also very near, within our very hearts. The abode of the Lord in the spiritual sky, the kingdom of Vaikuntha, is certainly beyond the material sky, and we cannot find the limit even of this material sky. If the material sky is so great, then how can we understand the spiritual sky, which is altogether beyond it?
The spiritual sky is far, far beyond this material universe. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, that supreme abode of mine is not illumined by the sun or moon, nor by fire, nor electricity. Those who reach it never return to this material world. Bhagavad Gita 15.6 Nevertheless, he can appear before us within a moment. He can run or fly faster than the mind or wind, so swiftly that no one can surpass him. Wherever you go, there he is. Yet we have been conditioned by modern so-called education to neglect Krishna, the personality of Godhead, when he comes before us. We are taught to call his existence mythological or primitive superstition, and spiritual experiences are all in your mind. The Lord condemns this ignorance in Bhagavad Gita, where he says, Fools deride me when I descend in human form. They do not know my transcendental nature and my supreme dominion over all that be. Bhagavad Gita 9.11 Krishna is not an ordinary being, or even an ordinary spiritual being, nor does he appear in this world in a mortal material body. His form is always spiritual, eternal, and all-powerful, even as an infant in the lap of his mother. He plays like that, just to enjoy intimate loving relationships with his pure devotees. The same so-called experts who assume that God is impersonal also contend that when the Lord descends to this world, it must be in a material body like an ordinary living being. They want to place him on an equal level with themselves, refusing to acknowledge the inconceivable power of the Lord. They do not realize that because God is the complete whole, with inconceivable and inexhaustible potencies, he can accept our service at any place or time, or through any medium. Because he is completely transcendental, he can convert his different potencies according to his own will. In other words, any one of his transcendental senses or potencies can perform the actions of any other. Therefore, he can eat by seeing, or appear in a form of a temple deity. Nothing is impossible for him, and there are no barriers to his will. But those whose minds are insufficiently agile cannot accommodate such transcendental concepts. They cannot understand that the Lord can incarnate himself, or that the complete whole can appear within his creation. They falsely reason that if he does incarnate, he must appear in a material form. These false conclusions are nullified as soon as we accept the Lord's inconceivable potencies. He can be inside and outside, here and there and everywhere at the same time, with full consciousness, knowledge, and potency. Once we understand this, then we can understand that it is quite possible for the Lord to convert his material energy into spiritual energy. Since all energies are his, they can be utilized according to his will. For example, the Lord can appear in the worshiper's mind, in a mantra containing his holy name, or in the form of the archavigraha, a deity in a temple apparently made of clay, stone, or wood. <clears throat> These sacred deity forms, although sculpted from material ingredients, are not idols because they are representations of the transcendental form of the Lord. His name, form, abode, pastimes, qualities, associates, potencies, etc. are always transcendental, even when they appear in matter. Yes, they are symbols, but because they are symbols of a transcendental reality, they are qualitatively equivalent to the realities they represent. We can recognize the Supreme Lord in his deity form or in the vibration of his holy names when our natural spiritual intelligence is cleansed from the covering of material existence by associating with and hearing from the great souls, the self-realized devotees. Devotees who want to see the Lord with their material eyes, are benedicted by the Lord when he appears in his beautiful deity form. 
Although these devotees are in the lowest stage of devotional service, they are not worshipping an idol. They are really worshipping the Supreme Lord, who, after being invited by his devotees, has agreed to appear before them in a material form to accept their service. The Archa Vigraha, or deity form, is carefully crafted by long lines of devotee artists according to the detailed instructions of the scriptures. The deity expansions of the Lord are eternally existent with all paraphernalia. <clears throat> In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, As all surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects, O son of Prita. Bhagavad Gita 4.11 The Lord reserves the right not to reveal 